So you're considering taking your very first international trip? Well, don't even think about planning for it until you watch this video because I am gonna share with you everything I learned along the way. So I just took my very first international trip and I always thought that I would go to Jamaica or Mexico or do something close. You guys, I went all the way out and took a trip from Atlanta to Frankfurt, Germany on the way to Athens, Greece. I know, I know. Y'all, this trip was so much. I was so stressed before, but that is why I wanted to come back and do this video for you guys so that you don't have to feel how I felt. So in this video, I am going to share 10 things that I learned, some before my trip, some after, to help you prepare for your very first international trip. If you're planning your first international trip or have an international trip in general coming up, be sure to let me know in the comments where you're going. Now, let's get into this video. I'm Jennifer Danielle, solo travel influencer, and if you are new here, I would like to welcome you. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you are returning, hey, welcome back. Let's get into this video, girl. Let's talk about it. So, like I told you guys, we are talking about all the things I wish I would have known. These are kind of things that I feel like nobody tells you. And I don't think they keep it from you just because they don't want to tell you this is an international travel traveler but I feel like it's more so you don't know what you don't know so I'm gonna go over these 10 things they're gonna be relatively quick and every one of them are important so be sure to stay tuned throughout this entire video all right so the first thing you should do as an international traveler is register for the smart traveler program what this is is basically an app slash program that links to the United States Embassy to let them know that you are traveling internationally and the reason why you want to do this is because if something were to happen, like say there is an emergency in a particular place you're traveling to, you want the United States Embassy, the government, to know that you're there so that they can get you out. One thing I can say about the U.S. is they get their people out of these situations. I don't know if you guys kind of heard about what happened when, um, we'll say the vid first happened um, and people were stuck on a cruise ship. They wouldn't let people off. Um, just because of they were afraid of the virus spreading and everything. But the United States literally contacted the cruise company and was like, we need to get our people off this ship. So that is basically what this program is, is you're going to register for it. Give them a general layout of your itinerary. It's very easy to do. You just fill in the information and basically it lets them know in the United States that you are traveling somewhere else. Um, if there is an emergency that happens to happen, they will send you a text message and keep you abreast of anything that you need to know. Like say the safety changes and it goes to like what they call like a cold orange or red where it's not safe for U.S. travelers. You'll be the first to know being a part of that program. It doesn't cost anything to join. And I feel like that's something that a lot of people don't tell you about. So I will be sure to link that website in the description so that you guys can click on it and kind of look at it to know what to expect. But that is definitely one of the things you want to do if you're traveling outside of the U.S. So my second biggest fear when it came to traveling internationally was what the heck is going to happen with my phone? Will my phone work? What do I need to do in order to use my cell phone while I'm traveling? Well, I found out there are a couple different options. The first one is you can get what's known as an eSIM. And this is basically an electronic SIM that works in other countries. Um, I don't honestly know a lot about that process because that's not the method that I use. But what I did instead was I contacted my phone company and got signed up for what was known as global travel. Now, this is going to vary depending on what who your phone provider is. Um, it was very, very easy to do. It was something that I was literally able to go under my um, Xfinity website and sign up for. I've done this with AT&T as well. Um, I recently switched companies, so I know it works for both. But basically, you sign up for a global travel program, and there's a list of countries that your phone will work in with, it, with this program, and you're, it will kind of sense that you're there. And so as soon as you like make a call or send a text message in a particular place, it's going to kick in and tell you, okay, you've initiated this global travel pass for 24 hours and it's going to be this set amount of money. So in my case, it's $10 a day to use. And that is way better than making individual calls and coming back to thousands upon thousands of dollars of a phone bill just because you didn't make that call first. So I highly recommend checking with your phone company to find out exactly what they have for international travel. Let them know where you're going if you need to talk to them. If not, this can be done online and you can look at the list of countries that it works for. And that way you can initiate it so that it will automatically pick up wherever you're going and you'll be able to use your cell phone. 
Okay, so the second part of this is you want to contact your credit card provider. So a lot of times when you travel internationally, um, credit card, major credit cards work overseas. Um, American Express, obviously with American in the name, typically doesn't work, but like Visa, MasterCard, um, sometimes Discover can be hit or miss, but I'll definitely say Visa and MasterCard are the two that are going to work the best if you're traveling internationally. And whenever you have a credit card and you're going to be traveling, you want to contact your credit card company and let them know. Because that way, what's going to happen is they won't flag it for um, fraud or think that someone is like doing some type of fraud on your account. Because the worst thing that can happen is that you're stranded in another country or you're visiting another country and you don't have access to your money. So you definitely want to contact that credit card company and let them know, hey, I'll be traveling from these days to these days. So if you see any charges come up, those are me just so that they won't flag it and turn your card off. Tip number three for first time international travelers, and this one kind of goes into number two with what I mentioned with the credit card is, I recommend getting some amount of currency for where you're going. So I always recommend having some form of cash on you just because like I said, credit cards, anything can happen where it can be turned off. Um, a lot of times, like when you're traveling, they always tell you to be very leery of where you place your card inside of just because of fraud. And I mean, we have things like that that happen here in the US also with like weird machines and things, but you always wanna have some level of cash that you're traveling with because the worst thing that can happen is that you're out of town in a new place and you don't have access to any money. So for me, I live in Atlanta and so I was able to get some currency exchanged within um, the airport. And so I was going to Athens, Greece, and um, so their currency that they use there is the euro. So I went to the currency exchange place within that, um, within the airport. It was like, I can't remember the gate, but I'll list it somewhere here. But I was able to go to that gate. I didn't have to make any type of appointment or anything. They have it there. That's a currency that's frequently used, um, you know, all over Europe. And so I was able to go in there, give them my U.S. cash. They charged me a little bit based on the exchange rate. And I basically had some euro. So um, definitely recommend getting some of those before you go wherever you're going. You never want to fully rely on one form of paying for things when you're traveling internationally. The next thing you want to do if you're traveling internationally is figure out what your transportation method is going to be. You guys, it's, if you watch any of these videos of me talking, you know as a solo traveler, my biggest fear is the transportation piece because I feel like it leaves you in such a vulnerable position because you get in the car with someone, they're driving you around. It's for me in the U.S., it's very different with Uber because you're able to track on the app and see, and it kind of has that emergency plug-in. But when you're in this place that you've never seen before, you don't know where you're going. A lot of times they don't have the methods of like Uber where you can track it within your phone. It can be very scary. And so you definitely want to figure out what transportation method you're going to use before you get there. Now in Greece, they actually had Uber taxi. So it was technically the Uber app, but you were able to ride a taxi um, that took you places. So it was very similar to what you have here in the US and it worked out perfectly. What I would recommend doing for someone who is like really traveling for the first time and traveling by themselves is to use an app like Welcome Pickups that allows you to set your pickup and have someone to pick you up within the airport with a sign. I feel like this is the safest method because you are pre-arranging it. You know you're going to go to the right vehicle and you already kind of have like that company backing. But you definitely want to look into travel. Like I know that back in the day people would just jump in taxis and that it was just so free and um you know you didn't have, really have to think about safety or maybe people you probably should have but people didn't think about safety the way that you have to now but especially as a solo traveler i think that it's so important to have those type of things pre-arranged and to know how you're going to navigate getting around because that is just the scariest thing for me is not knowing how i'm going to get to and from places and to and from the airport so definitely look into how you you want to um, use transportation while you're traveling and set up something ahead of time for at least getting from the airport to your hotel. 
All right, my fourth tip for first time international travelers. Now this is one that I did not do and I should have. So this is what I learned from my last trip is you should learn some basic words or language for wherever you're going. I know here in the US, we take it so for granted that everybody speaks English or understands some form of English. Um, <laughs> when you're traveling internationally, like it should be common sense, but it just isn't like that. So when I went to the airport in Greece, I looked at the sign and I almost lost it because I was like, what the heck does that say? I don't have any idea what it says. And so you want to learn some basic words. Like I would say bathroom, help, um, you know, how do I, just some basic form of communication for wherever you're going. Now they also have apps like Google Translate where you can tell it what you're trying to say and it will type it on the phone. So I definitely recommend using an app like that and downloading it before you leave on your trip just so that you'll have it handy for wherever you're traveling to. My next tip for first time international travelers really goes across the board for all international travelers is do your research. You definitely want to know like basic what's legal and illegal in a certain place that may be different here in the US. When it comes to like the vape pens, we saw the horrible stories there um, of what happened with the basketball player. I think it was in Dubai, but you definitely want to know what you can and cannot fly with just the basics. And sometimes it's things that we really take for granted here. Like for me, I'm never traveling with like weapons or with, um, you know, I guess any kind of illegal substances or anything like that. But you definitely want to do your research and know what you can and cannot travel with. And right in line with that is understanding what the um, airport requirements are as well as luggage requirements for whatever wherever you're going because you definitely don't want to get into a situation where you're charged a ton more money just because you didn't know that you can't go over this weight amount um, because sometimes it's different a lot of times like I found with international travel luckily this didn't happen with me in Greece but um, a lot of times it's actually a lower weight limit than we have here in the US with major airlines also alongside with that, they typically list the weight, the maximum weight that you can have for your luggage in centimeters versus um, inches or in some other measurement than what we do, like as far as the dimensions and everything. So just be sure to check that and be sure to be cognizant wherever you're going and whatever airline you're using. All right, the next tip is very basic, but I feel like I've never heard anyone else say it. And maybe it's just a common thing where you don't think about it, but learn the emergency phone number for wherever you're going. It's not 911 wherever you're going. So you definitely want to just look up what is the emergency number in Greece, for example, or the emergency number in wherever you're going, because that is simple information that you really, really need to know whenever you're traveling somewhere. My next tip for international travelers is to number one, make a copy of your passport and keep that with you because you never know, you know, if something happens and you're going to lose your documentation, you definitely want to at least have a copy of it somewhere. So keep them in separate places, make a copy, but also take a photo of your passport in your phone, as well as a photo of your health insurance. And you can keep that in your phone and um, under photos or you can create a note of important things that you need to do so i'm going to show you guys in my phone what it looks like i'll insert it here but basically you just want to take a picture of those things and you can create an entire document hit the phone under um your iphone and, or the camera under iphone and it's going to actually plug that into that document and there you kind of have like a second um, back document of your important information in the event that something happens. I feel like we've gotten through the safety and kind of important things when it comes to international travel. So these are kind of like the fun things that you need to know before. So of course, like I mentioned with the phone service and things working differently, you may not have access to Wi-Fi everywhere, wherever you're traveling. So the biggest thing you want to do is to download your songs, download your audiobooks, podcasts, or anything that you want for during your flight as well as while you're traveling. One of my favorite things to do while I'm traveling is to listen to podcasts and listen to my audiobooks while I'm laying out on the beach um, and on vacation. So you definitely want to pre-download those things so that they're stored on your device so that you're not using Wi-Fi to try to download them later because 
I can tell you, if you're flying, it's not gonna work anyway because the flight Wi-Fi doesn't seem to have the capacity to download anything. Believe me, I've tried it. But um, you also definitely wanna have that before you get to your destination. And so kind of like I mentioned to you guys earlier about having Google Translate, I highly recommend downloading Google Maps as well. So I typically, when I'm like in the US, I use my um, Apple map that's plugged into the iPhone. But when I'm, I found that traveling to Greece, it was more accurate to use Google Maps. And so I was able to plug in my destination there. So you want to download any apps you may need. Um, so if you're going on a cruise, your cruise apps um, for the particular cruise line, anything you may need before, you want to make be sure to do that before you leave. Because A, you want to use your home Wi-Fi so that it's not charging you additional money. And two, it's going to be stronger and download quicker if you do it while you are home versus trying to do it while you're on the go. All right, so we have reached the final tip for my first time international travelers. You definitely, definitely want to pre-charge your accessories and pre-charge any of your electronics. The worst thing you can do is get on that long flight and plan to use your iPad for whatever reason and it's not charged. So I spend a day, two days before just charging everything I need. As a content creator, you guys would not believe the number of things I have to charge and prepare before I take a trip from lighting to the remote to the tripod to the speakers. I mean, just everything, microphones, everything has to be charged. So you want to go ahead and pre-charge your electronics because also once you travel internationally, you'll find out in the next video that you typically need a different outlet and you may not have access to the same plugs and, and things that you need to charge your things. So you definitely want to make sure that you plan to do that before you take your international trip. That's going to be all the tips I have for now for planning your first international trip. I hope you guys found this information helpful. Be sure to come back for the next video because I am going to be sharing the international flight essentials you need. So all the things you need to have an enjoyable flight and talking about what my first flight was like. So be sure to hit that subscribe button on your way out. If you have not, leave a comment and let me know what you thought of this video and what you want to see next. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.